materials will define the look of your voxels, they are assigned on your terrain layers and also used for voxel building. They have several properties that need to be tweaked and changed depending on what you need. First thing to do is to assign at least a diffuse map and a normal map in the lower boxes. Diffuse is the color information. Normal map is a color image that simulates the volumetric details when your material is receiving light. You can also add a roughness map to add some specularity and glossiness to your material. You can also add metallic and emissive maps for metallic and glowing materials. These maps will be processed and rendered by the engine and they will be also exported with your Unreal or Unity bundle. The different textures are used by the materials. For instance, if I create a stone material and duplicate it, both are using the same set of textures and both can have different properties. Once the scene is exported to a game engine, Voxel Studio will only export one set of textures. So don't worry about the number of materials in Voxel Studio, but more about the number of textures used by them. Here is something useful. You can drag and drop textures from your folders to Voxel Studio. This will open a new window for creating a new material. Voxel Studio will try to organize the different maps based on their name. One important thing there are two different ways to apply textures on voxels. The most common one is to create tiling materials. In the material properties, if UV is set to false, the textures will be applied and repeated based on the three world axes. It's recommended to make your textures repeating with themselves so you have continuity across the geometry. The other method is to import meshes with UV coordinates and voxelize them. You can map an image onto an object in a 3D software like Blender, Maya or 3ds Max to capture details of your object surface and shape. Once the mesh is imported and converted into voxels in Voxel Studio, the textures will be applied relatively to the shape's scale, position and rotation, and not the worlds. The original mesh is simply a tool to apply a certain texture and shape to your voxels. If you deform it, the texture will be deformed as well. On the contrary, the tiling textures will not stretch and be consistent across the surface. 
However, it won't be as good for texturing your geometry. That's why I recommend to use tiling materials for the terrain. Flat and simple surfaces. And meshes for more intricate shapes. Materials have a unique ID, a number, and can be named and renamed. Highlight material in the render menu on the top bar allows you to visualize in the 3D view the material you have selected in your project item list. Also, the picker tool on your render view allows you to see the name of a material in your scene and a left click will select this material. This tool is very handy for a rapid switch between materials while building and painting, as well as for finding voxelized meshes in your scene. You can control the hard edge factor by tweaking the face smoothing end goal value Greater values will give your material geometry a smoother look. For instance, metal would have a lower value than grass. A little note on the type of material. You can create a water material by simply change solid to water. It's not dynamic, it's just a different shader. Voxel anti-aliasing is a value that goes from 0 to 1. It's a special feature available in Voxel Studio but also with the Unity and Unreal Engine plugins. If you need a specific geometry to have high resolution in the distance, enter a low value here in its material. For instance, tiling materials will use 1 because they are commonly used on flat and simple geometry. Intricate elements like architecture meshes would have their material set to zero, so they keep their resolution pretty high in the distance. Note that if you open a very old project, you may need to click Recompute LODs in the settings window for this feature to work properly. Something useful to know about materials is that you can create a material that will use other materials when the geometry angle is changing. For example, I create this material using a dirt texture as a base. The dirt is visible on the entire sphere. Now I change the placement properties on the grass material, starting from 80 to 90 degrees. The grass material itself is not affected. Now I fit the terrain material with the grass here on the submaterials boxes. I can see now that when grass is used by terrain, the grass shows up on the top of the sphere. If I let the default values, the grass material will completely replace the other material. You can add multiple materials with different angle range and so create a complex material for your geometry. With this, you can achieve decent natural look for your terrain 
without having to create biome layers for each materials. Combined to the planting rules on materials, this can ease a lot the terrain creation process. The bleed properties determine if your material is blending with other blending materials and how this blend reacts. The length of the transition and the blending hierarchy between materials. Note that for the moment, the blending between materials happens on the contouring mesh and not the voxels. For instance, if you build with no simplification at LOD 0, one single voxel will be rendered as one or multiple triangles. So the blending is going to be very short, whatever values you assign here. Simply use this slider at 50% so the triangles are much larger and allow you to see the actual blending. That is something to be aware of when you build with blending materials. Another thing that influences the blending is the mesh optimization parameter. This influences the number of triangles of the contouring mesh for this particular material. The lower this parameter is, the more triangles your material will generate. For building, I recommend to use a lower value, so you have high fidelity between the voxels and the contouring mesh, with values like 0.002 and the simplification slider set to 50%. You have a good geometry to work with, and enough triangles to see the blending. You can change this parameter to a higher value when you are done building with these materials. This will greatly improve your scene's performance. You can add a displacement map to your set of textures. This map works in combination with the blending between materials and the parallax effect available in the rendering window. This parallax feature adds a volume effect to your materials when the proper image is assigned, which basically is a height map based on your textures and normal map. These maps can be created with 3D softwares, XNormal or Substance Designer. The parallax is simply a visual effect, no volume is actually extruded from the surface. This map is also used when two materials meet and blend together. In the placement section of your materials properties, below the sub-material angles, you can find displacement properties. The scale will define the strength of the displacement map, and the shift will increase or lower the level of the whole displacement. In theory, it works like the displacement maps on your terrain layers, even though no real elevation is added. If we take a concrete example, these pavers have a strong and contrasted uh, displacement map. The white pixels of this image are considered the most elevated, so when it blends with this grass texture, the pavers will take over the grass in the blending area because the grass displacement image has more middle grey values. The scale parameter allows you to tweak that behavior to lower the grass even more, for instance 0.5. The grass will be considered even lower and the pavers will be even more visible. The shift allows you to have more control over that without interfering with the contrast of each material. For instance, I could make the pavers go below the grass by simply add a negative value from minus 1 to 0.
Styling materials benefit from specific attributes. Below the displacement properties, you have tiling properties. Tiling will define the scale of your texture. For instance, I can change the size of my pavers by making the texture repeat less and assign a smaller value. Be careful with this parameter because you have to consider the blending with other materials and the overall pattern of your image. Tiling textures are by default increasing their size on the distance to avoid the repetitive look. Distance bands is controlling the number of scales the material is having and distance scaling will control how big they become in the distance. The paver's texture here is noisy, so I choose a small value in the scaling, so the pattern stays quite small in the distance. On the contrary, the rock texture has a very specific pattern, and will not look good on the mountains if they repeat too much. So I assign a large number here. It's completely up to you to mix and match your different tiling scales so they make sense and look good in the distance. <laughs> 